Hey guys, it's Joy. Today I want to do a quick review for you of the logic of English, and as quick as I can make it, that is. Um, I actually first heard about the logic of English at a home homeschool conference that was in my area. It was called Teach Them Diligently. I would highly recommend it. You can go on and search for it. Um, they only hold it in a few big cities a year, so they haven't been back anywhere near me um, or anywhere close enough to drive to since, and this was probably two or three years ago that they were here. So I would highly recommend going to that if it's in your area. It's amazing. So anyways, the reason I recommend it is because that's how we got started with the logic of English. Because the gal who actually started it and has written the curriculum, she was there and she sold me on it. She is great and everything she was saying just resonated with me and uh, the way she teaches, the phonograms and everything like that. Um, I would say it's other programs are going to have similar things, but she has come up with kind of a whole new set of phonograms for the most part. I haven't looked at, I haven't exhaustively looked at every English curriculum out there, but I feel like she has really um, come up with some that other a couple of other programs that I looked at did not have. So anyways, and the biggest sell for me was that she wrote it kind of specifically for boys. Um, girls would enjoy it too, but for boys that really need that um, active, you know, motor skill type of uh, teaching method, they love it. So my son would say English is his favorite, um, favorite subject. So it is kind of, um, each lesson is quite a bit of work. I guess I should preface that with saying I've never used anything else, so I don't know if it's a lot of work, but I feel like it is. So sometimes I actually cut the lessons in half. I'll do one half one day, finish up the next half the other day. I bought their, their foundations curriculum. It's A, B, C, and D. And, um, you know, I can't tell you specifically which grades that is, but it's pretty much like K through second-ish. That's maybe a bad, um, you know, it just really depends on the kid. So we're finishing up D this year and my son's in second grade and um, yeah, we're just finishing up D. D actually just came out over Christmas, so it's very new. Um, but I really, we've loved it. And so anyways, I will just go ahead and show you what um, the pages look like and what we do kind of on a daily basis. Here's a quick shot of the foundations A through C. I ordered all of them because we, when we started this last year, I wasn't sure where my son would be exactly. So we didn't use any of A. We used a little bit of B. Um, we started in B and then we did all of C last year and finished up a little bit into this year and then the D came out around Christmas and so we ordered that and that's what we've been working on second semester. Okay, I have it all laid out for you. This is typically what we do. We do it on the floor in our schoolroom. Sometimes we do it up at the school table. But um, here's the teacher's guide. Here is the workbook. And then I'll explain these cards to you. I keep mine in two of our work boxes because there, are, there is a lot of extra stuff that you need, like scissors and highlighters and Sharpies and glue sticks and dice and just a bunch of stuff that we've collected. So I now keep it in its own drawer. You also need a whiteboard, that kind of stuff. So I keep it generally just all together so I don't have to go hunting for it. It is an open and go lesson plan, but I feel more comfortable teaching it if I've just briefly looked over and know what's coming. So a lot of times the night before or even right before our lesson, I just kind of glance over each section and see what we're going to be doing. And then if there's any cutting out of the workbook, I usually just do that to make it go a little quicker. I mean, my son could do it, but just to save time, I usually you know, cut out different um, cards and things like that that we're going to play a game with. So when we bought, um, when I bought A through C, it came, well, it didn't come with. I also purchased the phonogram cards. And these are the basic phonogram cards. It says that up in the, um, there's, a, there's a stripe on all of these cards. Ah, oh, it doesn't want to focus. Um, there's a stripe on all of these cards on the back that explains to you what they are. 
So that's really helpful. Um, eventually I'd like to get some sort of like a recipe holder type file index, um, file card index, and put all of these cards in there. And I think that would be the best way to store these. And it would be, um, yeah, just really convenient. So anyways, on the back, it tells just like, um, it explains to you how it's said, it, it, it gives you a word, you know, so you know exactly how the, how the sound is said. And then it says like the er of bird. And I use that a lot. So if we're, you know, even with his spelling words, I'm like, it's the er of bird and he will know, oh yeah, it's IR. So that's kind of helpful. Um, you know, that's, I'll, it's a dead giveaway, but spelling, I would say right now in this um, curriculum, it's not just a bunch of memorized words. It's very much based off of the phonograms that they learn. And so it's really helping them think through the word and understand the word as opposed to just, hey, memorize these 10 words this week. And, you know, oh my gosh, sorry, my lights are freaking out here. Okay, so that's the basic phonogram cards, and they explain on the back how to say them. And then there's this pile. It's the game phonogram cards, I guess you'd call them. And they just have logic of English on the back, and they look exactly like the back of the game cards. So this is what you play games with. And I just love um, how many games she has and how she does it, because my son just loves it. Like, he just lights up. If he's not in the mood to do school and we start playing an English game, it just immediately, he is in a good mood and he just loves it. So I appreciate that so much about this curriculum. So the game cards, um, they're the exact same as the basic phonograms, except obviously they don't have the, um, you know, explanation, the little cheat sheet on the back. So that's the only difference. And then, <clears throat> okay, so with Foundations D, we got a set of advanced phonogram flashcards. And then, and this came with it, and then we got a set of grammar cards, and you can see it's, you know, it tells you the number of what you need. And then we also got a set of spelling rules, and so that's been really um, handy as well. So, I'll just take you quickly, as quickly as I can, through a lesson. So, it tells you at the very beginning what the objective is, objectives are, and also, like, what book you need. So, I... This is the first um, Foundations book, this D. It is the first one that actually doesn't either have the readers in the back. It also comes with, I should show you this. Um, I keep them up here. It comes with some readers this time. And like for C, it had readers in the back that you just tore out and stapled together. Um, I don't know if, if they're changing that, but that's kind of how... Um, how I, or how the readers came for D. This is how the readers came for D. But for C, you just tore them out of the back and then you could um, staple them together. And then they also came with these little phonogram pieces, um, letters and things like that, that you can use to put words together to kind of, you know, like for a fun spelling game or something like that. So, okay. So, Back to the book. Um, I have I have found all of these books at the library. You could buy them all off of Amazon beforehand if you don't like to go to the library and do that. Um, they're all very, like, you know, reader books. So my library's had all of these. So this one, I just look a couple of days ahead and see what I'm going to need. And we go to the library at least once a week. So I'll just, you know, put it on my list and I'll grab it when we go to the library. And then it goes through all of what you're going to be going over that day. And then it tells you the materials that you need, which is really helpful. And I will say, I don't even usually look at this anymore because I have all of my materials in my bag or in my drawer bag. Yeah. Um, but I did miss this week that um, she had chopsticks on here and that would be really fun. And we actually had a pair and we used them like just a couple of days before we <laughs> needed them on here. But it was super fun game that I'll go through here in a little bit with you. Um, so anyways, yeah, she has all the materials that you can just look and, you know, make sure that you have. So that's really, really handy. Um, okay, so it always starts out with this phonogram practice. And this is this, this is just for D. Um, C was a little different. And I'm sure, you know, B and A obviously very different as well because it's for younger kids. But this is for D. And I would say around second grade-ish, but that's just what we're using it for. So every kid's different, you know. But this will give you a little idea of what we're studying.
So it gives you a game and it's slap it and it then it tells you over here exactly what you're going to do. So you grab, you know, 10 to 25 pairs of phonogram game cards, which are these. And then, um, cause so you don't practice the phonogram, like every single phonogram, cause that's a pretty big stack. Um, you don't practice them every day, but like I grab half one day and then the next half the next day or a third or whatever. And then, um, you get, the, you come here and you get the slap card and then it just explains how you use that, how to play the game. So it's really fun. A lot of times she'll tell you how to play it with just one student or with a whole classroom. So it's, you know, made for homeschoolers and it's also made for, um, a classroom as well and then it comes you come up here and then you have some grammar and so we're just you know kind of reviewing nouns and verbs and um, then it tells you exactly which phonogram card number one three point one and then I this is what I love let's say the definition for a noun is if we're grumpy or let's say it as if we're happy and I mean we just make it silly and he loves it and then it also has like this multi-sensory fun as well um, I don't always do those anymore just because we, you know, he has enough fun doing this stuff she has over here, but she just has scads of ideas and it's really, really cool. Um, so especially if you just had one kid or, you know, whatever, you could really have fun. You could go crazy with it. Um, so this chopsticks chopstick challenge, sorry, I couldn't spit that out. Um, this was really a cool idea. She basically was just so, oh, I needed to move back up here. Okay. So then you see 139.1 and you know that's in the workbook and so you come over here to the workbook and it says 139.1 nouns and verbs read each word circle the nouns in blue underline the verbs in green so you do that and then um you come back over here and for the chopsticks challenge since i didn't have chopsticks we just like you know this was for synonyms so we basically i just had a match across but typically what you do is you cut out um, all of these and then you know he'd use the chopsticks to try and match to kind of pile the synonyms on top of each other so super cute um, little thing to do she just has so many fun ideas and then um, then you come over here we review or learn a new spelling rule and you go over that and then <clears throat> here's the spelling list for the week it always has this list in the book um, I don't believe C had this uh, the book before, but I really like that they put it in there this time. I mean, not that it was a big deal to grab a piece of paper, and actually we generally used our whiteboard for spelling, but this time they included a spelling list in the workbook. So <clears throat> what you do is, and I don't do this exactly like this, but I pretty much follow this um, how they have it. So, oh, and I will say, they actually included this little spelling analysis and so this is exactly how you're supposed to say the spelling words for them so I really like that they had that little handy guide so I don't do it exactly like this but um, I pretty much follow whoops sorry follow the way it goes so like dinner I would say okay the word is dinner dinner will be at six o'clock and then I say din din ner din ner <laughs> So I really make it enunciated because at this point, it's really just learning the spelling words because um, I actually asked her about this because I'm like, well, they're not like memorizing 10 words a week or whatever, or 15. And, um, you know, she said at this point, they're really learning from these phonogram cards that they're learning. They're really learning how they work in words. And so trying to um, come over here. And so like ER is a phonogram. So you underline that. So you have different markings that they do on their spelling words. Um, I don't always have them do these markings, but it is very helpful. And so, and then there's like a little spelling hint, um, which kind of these two sometimes go hand in hand. But, you know, it's just different things like that that are really helpful. And it tells you like what all of these symbols mean in the very beginning of the book. There's a really handy guide um, in the teacher's manual. You know, uh, this is not... I don't want to lose my place. But anyways, it, it tells you, um, it has a table of contents in the front and, and it also has different tables that tell you like how you're supposed to, how you're supposed to pronounce this U with the little, you know, um, short sound over it. I mean, you actually learn, like your kid learns these and so then you learn them as well. But anyways, it's just a little handy guide in the front. 
Um, then you come over here and you have your reading. So we had our reading book. And then it just takes you through exactly verbatim what you need to say. I mean, turn to the table of contents. What's the title of chapter three? What do you predict this chapter will be about? I mean, it's very easy as far as that goes. And then it gives you an extra book list over here. And then it has multi-sensory fun, like make dumplings, because that's, you know, what the chapter was about. We don't typically do this. And then the teacher tip, um, just because we <laughs> usually don't have enough time. But I love that, you know, it's there if we need it. Um, we've done it a couple of times, like looking up pictures of old Chinese money. You know, things like that. Like, we've done that, and um, it really just makes them more interested, you know. And so I like that that's there. And then it's another workbook page. And actually, if you come over here, she has a picture of the old Chinese money and then a little something that they read about it. And it's generally, you know, it has, they have, they put words in there that they've been u learning the phonograms, you know, um, I don't know, like the double E and things like that. So it's really, I don't know, she really does a good job, I've noticed, with using words in the reading that pertain exactly to what we've been learning about or the different phonograms we've been studying. And then we do like a Venn diagram, and that was actually back a little ways. And I mean, it looks like that. And then it's in the workbook, and then they have to write it in. And then they do like a spelling activity, and they have like a board game, or she'll just give you a bunch of different ideas sometimes of what to do. Um, I think this one might just be, yeah. So this is just this board game that they have in the book, and you go back and you can just choose different words, um, and then they just practice spelling the, the spelling words. So that's more of, you know, where you kind of typically, um, I, don't, I don't have them do the markings and all of that for that time. I'm just like, hey, do you remember how to spell dinner? Din, ner, and then he has to spell it from just that and I'll give him maybe a sentence. And so this is really fun. He likes that because typically they make this part really um, fun and he likes to have fun when he learns. Who doesn't? So anyways, that is exactly what the lesson is like. I mean, depending on his level of focus, um, if we do it earlier or later in the day or whatever, I would say it typically takes us 15 to 25 minutes to get through this. Um, I, I, you know what, 15 is probably too short, 20 to 25, 20 to 30, something like that to get through this. And I mean, 30 is getting through everything. And like I say, sometimes I divide it up. And so we only spend 15 minutes and we only do half of it. And then the second day we'll do, you know, like we'll get up to the spelling list and then the second day we'll do the reading and then a sp the spelling activity. So you know, depending on how much time we have and what, how his focus is and how we've been doing with, you know, other school things, if we've been, if other stuff's been taking longer, then that's how I do it. So anyways, that is our foundation D. I know it seems overwhelming, but it's really, it's laid out so in such an easy format. And I think she has done a fabulous job, especially with, um, with boys, like they just love it and girls would too, but it really holds my son's attention. So I can attest to that for the boys anyways. So anyways, I hope you've liked this review and, um, maybe I'll do a review of the A, B and C, or at least A as we go through it next year. But like I said, I haven't actually been through A. We just did part of B and all of C and now all of D. So, and we've loved it. We still love it.